Shall I tell you, you talked about brain well, development. Question, sorry. Of course, of course. So, around the world now, yeah. in 2024, do you think it's acceptable in Islam that nine-year-olds or six-year-olds getting married, nine-year-olds having sex? Do you, would you agree with that? Islam doesn't encourage that. No, but do you agree with it? If a nine-year-old today, uh, undeveloped, yeah. mentally undeveloped, no, of course not, this is ridiculous. What if you think, well, for, okay, not quite, you're, you're evading the question. So like, is it... You're talking about the social aspect, isn't well, it? Well, just, just Islam in general, because I think it is still being around, done today. So do you agree with that, or...? or... I thought I answered your question in a bit more detail okay. than you asked. All right. But tell me if I'm evading it again, I'll All try right. to be direct. If the child, if the nine-year-old is not mentally ready, she's not physically ready, what and it's not was? socially... If she was mentally ready yeah. and physically ready, then yeah. it's not socially acceptable. Okay. If you're in an Amazon rainforest or a jungle, then who are we to tell them, oh, you can't do that or this or that? It's up to them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm saying that Islam doesn't say, oh, you living yeah. in that... Yeah. If it happens in a country that is acceptable, would you agree with that? Or you got no stance? Nine-year-old. Well, I was born and bred in the UK. So I know people with the society that I'm living in, nine-year-olds aren't developed here. So I, I'm well, biased. In a country, forget the UK, in a country where... Which country? Know, Give me an example. I don't know. Saudi Arabia? Um, I don't know. Yeah, wherever it's... Happening. I've been Saudi Arabia. Nine-year-old is still too young nowadays. Okay. Do you know anywhere in the world where it's happening today? I, I don't know. There are statistics of it happening in India and the US. And in certain tribes in you Africa. It? Yeah, yeah. I think nine is, I think nine is, okay. uh, in this day and age, is, is too young. I agree. But the thing is, for me to go to, a, uh, you know, an African tribe and tell them, I don't know how they're functioning, I don't know how they're upbringing their kids. For me to go and start enforcing my way of life, I can tell them that, look, this, these are the three criteria in Islam. Yeah. They might not accept Islam. I can explain to them logically that, look, that's the criteria. If they say, look, she's mentally ready, she's this, she's that, She's going to starve, she did I say, look, you guys know your situation best. Me, from a Eurocentric point of view and this and that, I, I can't really say, but if she fulfills that three criteria and that country says it's socially acceptable, it's up to you guys. You do what you want. You see? Because yeah. I'm not going to enforce my view on you. Me born and bred here and knowing how kids are and this. I'm not going to go to some next country and start saying, yeah, you guys should do this. I say, look, this is the three criteria that we have. Yeah. If you think that's the criteria, it's up to you. You do what you want. Me condemning you or this or that. I don't think that's really my position. I would feel like nine-year-old, is she ready? That would be my question. And it would be up to them to prove if she is or not. And it would be up to me to prove again that she's not. You see, so the burden of proof would be on me if I'm saying, no, don't do it. I said very like, the answer you've given is very, uh, you know, you've explained it really well. Very, Thank you. Uh, I did try to be, yeah. As, uh, because I know it comes up. What about? Sounds yeah. a bit sticky. It sounds a bit sticky. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. Because then you know what happens. I, I didn't give one aspect, which you'll probably hear, which is people would say, "Oh, how old was Mary when she got married to Joseph?" Uh, or how old was um, Isabella? And what does the Talmud say about getting married to three-year-olds? Sure. But again, those are other case studies that a person can look into. But I'm giving you the Islamic principle because you asked me from Islam, Islam point of view. So, what's your name? My name is Ishan. I'm Rob. Rob. Nice doing, to meet you, mate. So, Rob, let's be frank here. Yeah. You know I'm frank. I'm not going to bullcrap you. Be as open and honest as you want and yeah. blase as you want. Yeah. Based upon what you've seen and what you've heard about Islam and this and that, what questions do you have uh, or what that, concerns you? That was that issue with Aisha. What yeah. else was there? There was a... Uh, it's lost. It's, it's gone out of my brain now, but... I mean, again, I'm not, I can't say I'm like a practicing Christian and whatnot, but I've been brought up as a Christian, went to a C of E primary school, Church of England yeah. and whatnot. So uh, I just feel like, I don't want to be rude, it's almost like Christianity is the religion of love and it seems Islam is the religion of power. That's what I'm, that's the vibe I get from it. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. What gives you that impression? I don't know, it just seems like with the teachings, with the Bible and what, okay, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no proper religious person, I'm quite relaxed. It just feels, it's just a lot of teaching. I can't give you exact examples, but that's the vibe. Where with Islam, it's, I don't know. And about the, what was the other one with um, the wife or multiple wives? And maybe it's just, a, it's a myth, I don't know. But uh, that's, again, it's what you hear. Maybe it's hearsay, I don't know. 
So here's the thing, I'll give you a couple of examples that maybe you're familiar with. In the Old Testament, yeah. you probably heard this, uh, the term Amalek. No. So Amalek in the Old Testament, uh, it's in Book of Samuels, chapter okay. 15, verse 9. Yeah. yeah. So over there, they're commanded to kill men, women, children, infants, babies, donkeys, yeah. cattle. Now that is a verse very concerning. Okay. Because it's talking about killing infants, babies. The Old Testament. Old Testament, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you've got Benjamin Netanyahu now quoting Amalek. It's the Israel. Yeah, Israel, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, uh, he's quoting Amalek. Now that's very concerning. Yeah. And when certain people come and start saying, look, this is a problem with Islam. Yeah. I say, look, let's do a like for like sort of thing. Yeah. If this is in the Old Testament, which of course a Christian accepts because they believe it's revealed by God and God is Jesus, he's part of the Trinity. So Jesus is the author of the Old Testament as well, by default. Don't we, don't we lean towards the New Testament now? Though? They, yeah, as Christians you do, but you don't disregard the Old Testament okay. because you have to acknowledge the Old Testament, uh, the New Testament follows on from the Old Testament. Yeah. And the author is Jesus. Yeah. So when it talks about Amalek and the killing of infants and babies, we say, look, very simply, Let's do a like for like. Can you find us a similar verse in the Quran yeah. where we're told to kill babies? And the answer would be no. In Book of John, Gospel of John, yeah. Jesus says, it's a parable, but again, how a person interprets that parable is, I'll leave that to you. Jesus says, those that didn't believe, that didn't accept me as king, bring them here yeah. and kill them. Right. The Prophet. Can you give me an example in the life of the Prophet where he said those people that don't accept me as a Prophet, bring them here and then kill them. No such example. In fact, in the Quran it says, in fact, you know, you as a non-Muslim, one of the questions that even Bob asked as well. Am I a non-believer? Is that right? You're, you're, you're a non-believer. Uh, according to the Jews, you're a Goyim. I hope I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're Goyim according to the Jews. Yeah. To the Muslims, if you're uh, living under the Muslims, yep. you're under the protection of the Muslims. So and Sharia live, law? No. Sharia law. Now let's just pretend you're under Sharia law now, yeah? I hope not. No, no, no. Let's see, let's see. Let's, let's uh, go with this thought experiment. Rob, Rob, yeah? That's it, man. Rob's in Sharia law. Oh my God, what's going on? Sharia law. Yeah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that if somebody harms a a disbeliever that's living under the protection of the Muslims, yeah. they have harmed me. If they have harmed me, yeah. they have harmed God. Now, this is something I don't know if you're familiar. Whenever someone insults the Prophet, mm. the Muslims are up in arms. So, for a Muslim to even consider harming the Prophet is ridiculous. Okay. And on top of that, you conflate that with harming God. It's something unimaginable to a Muslim. You might be thinking, okay, fair enough. But what if I told you that the ruling is that, and this is the Maliki school of thought. Imam Malik said this and Laith said this. These are two scholars yeah, who we follow. If you unjustly kill a non-Muslim that's living under your lands, unjustly you kill them. The punishment for that Muslim, guess what it is? It's not good? Guess, take a guess. It's not death, is it? No. It's death. Okay. There's no ifs, there's no buts. Okay. You kill a non-Muslim under your protection, it's game over for you. Okay. okay. Death, you're thinking uh, that doesn't happen and that wouldn't happen in these Western countries. You imprison a non-Muslim that's living under your protection. You imprison them. We're told, according to the humbly school of thought, we're told that that in that regard, yeah. as the Muslims, you have to exhaust your means to go and free that individual that's living under your protection. Okay. I don't know about you, but post 9-11, certain British citizens, they were accused of certain things. And when they were abroad, there wasn't that thing. Like Mozambique is a prime example, a case study that you had MI5 that went there, heard and saw what he was going through. And now he's a free man, but there was no help, no assistance given to him. He'd done his time. He ended up being innocent. Yeah. 
but he said I received very little help. Now, just bear this in mind, yeah? Sure. Imprisoned. Yeah. Harmed. The Prophet said harm if you're harmed. On top of that, the Prophet said that if you oppress a disbeliever that's living under Sharia law, yeah. you oppress them. Right. On the day of judgment, yeah. the Prophet will be advocating on the side of the disbeliever. Okay. That's how much we favor and these references, they're clear. Yeah? The, the narrations of the Prophet, yeah. there are instances in the books of jurisprudence. I can even give you two examples also. At the time of Ali, yeah. who was a caliph, yeah. a disbeliever had been killed. Yeah. And the, the Muslim was brought forth. Then they asked the disbeliever's family, it's up to you now what happens to this Muslim. Yeah. They said, we, we don't want to kill him because we feel that justice has been done. They were remunerated. Yeah. He was free. At the time of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, something very similar happened. And the non-Muslim family said, we want him killed. And they were killed. I've got another question. Yeah. Go ahead. Your name again? Zishan. Zishan. Yeah, Rob. Zishan. So, I could be, could be speaking out of turn here, but don't take this. Go for it, mate. I'm used to it. Speakers corner. We've got Islam, we've got Christianity. Why is it with, with Islam, the religion, there's, there's what well, they say, radical Islam or Islamists, but with the Christianity, there doesn't seem to be many radical Christians or Christianists. Why is that? Why, 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 why do some people on the Islam religion take it really, really the, the, like the wrong way and do harm? You don't hear it on the Christian side. Why is it? it does occur on the Christian side. It's not popularized that much. For example, have you heard of the uh, Lord's Resistance Army? It's a Christian extremist group. Okay. Yeah, that's one amongst many. But if you go to, for example, just delve a, li a little bit into politics, yeah. you notice, for example, if I was to ask, why do you think the Iraq war took place? I'm not sure. According to your, what you've heard on the grapevine. And they thought there was weapons of mass destruction. But yeah. what do analysts typically say it was because of? Oil. Correct. You heard that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, even if you look at the old documents in British, uh, amongst the British, you've got somebody called Lord Crewe. And you can check him out yourself. Right. He was the foreign secretary. And there are clear documented evidence for him mm. saying, mm. it's within our interest to keep the Middle East divide, divided. Especially the oil principalities, i.e. Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, right. Iraq, because the Middle East is very oil rich and the world relies on oil, fossil fuels. So this is something which anyone that delves even on the surface of politics, they know occupy, occupation has been taking place in the Middle East. Iraq, Obama in an interview on CNN yeah. admitted we shouldn't have been there. It was wrong. Right. Yeah, the Iraq war. Yeah. Then because of invasion of the Iraq war, yeah. there's somebody called Robert Pape who said before the Iraq war, there was no suicide bombing in Iraq. No, was it was. I'm talking about suicide bombing. Yeah, there was no suicide. Just one sec, let me talk about this, yeah? Then you can come back to me. There was no suicide bombing that took place. After the invasion, that's when suicide bombing started. The literacy rate was 80% plus. After the bombing, it was less than 10%. The country was decimated. It was destroyed. They dropped bombs on there that were, the, I don't know if you've heard, there's something called depleted uranium, which when that bomb drops, the people are left cancerous, they get cancer. Right. And there's something called white phosphorus, which when it drops, it melts the skin and goes to the bone. This happened in Iraq. And Obama admitted that it was because of our illegal invasion yeah. that then born ISIS. ISIS was then born. Now what Secretary uh, John Kerry said, yeah. he said, we saw ISIS grow, just like any other extremist group. You know the security services got the eye on this sort of stuff but he says we allowed them to grow right. but here's the reason that he gives you can check this on youtube yeah. the reason why we allowed the, allowed them to grow was to counteract the leader of syria bashar al-assad right. we wanted them to weaken him because he was an ally of course of russia yeah we want to weaken russia yeah. and when we allowed them to grow then bashar became strong because he had russian strength but then by then isis had already grown so here's the thing, yeah. 
Iraq illegal invasion and oil. Then ISIS allowed to grow because of Syria. If we, sorry, I don't, I don't want to jump in. No, no, you can if you want. So if we go back to like 9-11. Yes. And it seems when that pilot went in the Twin Towers and he was saying what he was saying, I'm guessing he was a Muslim or Islam. Again, and he was saying Allah Akbar what, or whatever he was saying. Why, why did he do that? The, the person that talks about that yeah. or associated with that, he says the reason is foreign occupation. You come to our lands, you harm our people. In fact, in the US, one of his reasons was, did you know that there was an American base in Saudi Arabia? Did you know that? Uh, no. Just imagine if I told you that there's a Saudi base here in the UK, military base. Right. So, uh, America has at least 50 American bases worldwide. 11. People aren't happy with that. More. 11. Yeah. It's necessary. Much more. Necessary. Well, that, that's the thing. Absolutely. If somebody then says, as Iran, we need to have bases because it's necessary, because that's a different argument in itself. I'm not justifying it, by sure, the way. Sure. I know you're giving a really yeah. broad answer. And it, this is beyond my scope in terms of knowledge, and this is quite, this is a lot of. But just in, so it's got nothing with the Islam religion. Just give me one sec, though. Sure, Let me just give me one sec. Go, yeah. go. It's good. It, it's good. It just helped me to wrap up the answer. Sure, sure. Number one, foreign occupation. Palestine was under the protectorate of the British Empire. The British Empire, because of somebody called uh, Balfour, Lord Balfour, he requested it for the Jews. And then the British gave it away. Yeah, and ever since then, there's been an issue, Palestine, uh, you know, well, Muslims versus the Jews, or it's not even that actually, it's Israelis versus the Palestinians. Iraq, they lied about weapons of mass destruction. Uh, in Libya, they killed Gaddafi's son. In Iran, 1951, there was somebody that was democratically elected. He was somebody called Mohammed Mossadegh. Yeah. He was a leader, democratically elected. BP was the company, British Petroleum. They had issues with what he was doing with BP, and then they got rid of him. So what you're saying, can I just say? So what I'm saying is there's foreign intervention. Right. Then when foreign intervention takes place, there's bombing, so what you're drone saying, attacks. Though, what you're saying is these atrocities are happening not because of the religion itself, it's because it's for politics. retaliation. Yeah, politics. So it's got nothing to do with the religion. There's a, there's a nun, ex-nun called Karen Armstrong. She's written a book called Fields of Blood. She used to be a nun. She's not a, she doesn't follow any religion anymore, yeah. to my knowledge. She says that she's looked into all of this. Right. All of these atrocities that even Christians do as well. Sure. She says most of these things, if not all, all I think is a bit of a stretch. Most of these yeah. are to do with politics. Right. For example, if you look before, when Palestine was Palestine, Muslims and the Jews lived in harmony. For example, even in Spain, Andalus, when it was under Muslim control for 800 years. So I wouldn't notice. No, that's why I'm saying. I'm pleading ignorant. That's fine. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because you can then go home. I can tell you. And the stuff that I've mentioned, you can Google it and you can check it. Yeah. And that's why I think cameras are helpful sometimes for you to do your own research and then come back to me and say, you said this to me last week, you're wrong. And then I can be What's your channel, YouTube channel? a smile to Jannah extra. Can you write it down I'll write it down for you. I'll write it down for you. So because of foreign occupation, yeah. foreign invasion, interference, and all of that, look, for example, you might think, yeah, foreign intervention, interference. Bro, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, they made it out to be Catholics versus the Protestants. But you know what it was? Oh, right, yeah. yeah, it was the British that had gone there and set up bases there and uh, sent over the Protestants there. Yeah. And even till today, bro, it's big problems because you've got a majority Catholic population that have got problems with the Protestants up north. And again, the British are getting involved. And yeah. when, you, when you go to the Irish people, they, they, did, um, they put bombs here and all of that. You just need to type in R yeah, yeah. I, IRA history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when you look at the Tamil Tigers, so, um, Tamils, yeah, from Sri Lanka, because of occupation and foreign interference, bro, they were committing suicide attacks. They were one of the first to do suicide attacks. The kamikaze jets of the Japanese, they were doing that as well. Yeah. It's always when another power comes in, interferes, and that's why the pastor, the pastor of Obama, yeah. Jeremiah Wright, he said, and he mentioned some of the stuff that I mentioned, and he said, Americans' chickens are coming home to roost. 
that was Jeremiah Wright, the pastor of Obama. Again, that's something you can check. You can check his speech online as well. The countries that don't have foreign interference, Indonesia. Indonesia is majority Muslim country. Yeah, Indonesia, majority Muslim country. No, ish. have you ever heard of an Indonesian terrorist? I think so. Malaysian terrorist. That's because there's no foreign occupation there. They've got no issue there. So people have got issues with immigration and migration, but those migrants are coming from countries that have been bombed by Western powers. Even today, weapons are going and arming the Israelis to kill Palestinians. They have a right to defend themselves. Well, you have weapons and half of the population of Palestine are babies, infants under 18. And then British selling, sending the weapons there. I know you probably feel this in your heart. Maybe you can articulate this or not. It's up to you. But I would say Saudi, Iraq, mind your own business. England, America, mind your own business. Worry about what's in your borders. You don't, if you interfere in other people's lives, you bomb them, they're going to be pissed. They're going to want revenge. And then to recruit them, people will use the excuse of religion. But I've already told you. There was another thing, yeah. Go how how Muslims sure. okay. see, see non-Muslims. Thank yeah. you. Well, there was another, the slaves. Uh, I've heard Mohammed, what not, but he owned black slaves. How, how does that, do you agree with that today, if that was going on, or if that happens in Saudi Arabia, do you agree with that? Yeah, so Islam is the only religion, including Christianity, Judaism and the likes, that actually encourages and rewards emancipation, well, manumission, like freeing slaves. Yeah, so there's... It still goes on in Saudi Arabia today. Yeah, but Saudi Arabia isn't regarded as a Muslim country. Yeah, it's a Muslim majority country, but they don't necessarily, for example, they've got concerts taking place, inviting, who they invited? Nicki Minaj. Uh, no, I think Nicki Minaj said no, but Chris Brown, all of these guys, yeah, they've gone over there. Like, I'm sure you know, that's not something like no one uh, someone coming over, shaking their backside, or Iggy Azalea was.